Joe is my, my friend here. He's going to help me with the slides. I'm a slide guy. Uh, this doesn't work on Ubuntu. Well, not Ubuntu. Uh, Google, spread, uh, Google Spreadsheet? No. Spreadsheet? I, I always forget. Whatever this thing is called. Not PowerPoint. <laughs> um, the Microsoft name comes to my head first always. So, my real name is Juan Pablo, but just my mom calls me like that. My real, uh, everyone calls me Juanpi. And within the community, I maintain some modules in country. And since a few months ago, I have been uh, became one of the co-maintainers of basic old module that's in, in core right now in Drupal 8. And uh, my, I work as a developer at Laravel. So first of all, before diving into what authentication is, I would like to make a difference between what is authentication and authorization. Does anyone here in the room clearly know what's the difference between them or has ever, has ever re uh, heard about this differentiation? Excellent then, okay. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna take my time on this then. I'm gonna tell a story to explain these two concepts and, and because I wanna really clarify why they are so important to keep them separate. So this is a cheesy and posh club that it's in Madrid. That's where I'm run from. I hate this club because um, when I was at school, uh, you had to have 16 years old to get in here in the afternoon. And everyone in my school w would go to this place. The girl I liked would like to get into this place as well and, and would be there. But I had an issue. And the thing is that uh, my birthday is on the 31st of October. So mostly all everyone in my class were already 16. Well, I was still 15. Obviously, when I would get, get, get by the door and be welcomed by the bouncer, I would show my ID, or well, I would show a friend's ID or whatever I would try. And uh, that would be the authentication. Can you pass, please? Yep. Authentication means who the hell are you? Just give me your ID. That's it. I don't care about what sort of permissions you have. That, that would be the second step. First one is who the hell are you? Tell me who you are. In Drupal, this means your username and your password. That's authentication. So the bouncer is the authentifier, let's say. And the second one, authorization, it's your, your permissions, your role, what you can do for this. For me, when I would show the ID, the bouncer would tell me, man, you're not 16, get the hell out of here. Or the bouncer would tell me, man, this is not your picture, this is not your ID, get the hell out of here right now. Or he would tell me, man, you fake your ID, this, this thing is not your, your current birthday, so get the hell out of here. They, they knew me because I would try every weekend to go there. Can you hear again? That would be my first uh, relationship with 403. <laughs> so, um, and in Drupal, that would be your role, your set of permissions. What can you do with your ID? So first, who you are, then what can you do? That's first is authentication, second is authorization. Okay, in Drupal 8, there is a modular authentication system. And it's modular because it comes with a couple authentication providers, but then you can implement your own. Um, for example, yeah, and, and all, of, all of these, they, they extract some headers from the request and they identify a user out of it. So in core, we have two of them. There's cookie and there's basic core. Cookie is the default one. So uh, if you, when you log into, into Drupal, for example, there is a cookie being saved and that's on future requests uh, during that session, your, uh, your, uh, your ID would be uh, uh, taken from the cookie. Oops, sorry. Uh, yeah, don't worry. <coughs> um, this is the default one. So if, for example, there's no cookie, um, this uh, authentication provider will create an object which is the anonymous user and then hand it out to the, hand it out to the, to the authorization system to see if the, authenticity, the anonymous user can do something with, uh, with, with this request you are requesting for. While the second one, basically, it's uh, typical when you, some intranets or private sites that when you open in a browser, there is this pop-up that says uh, username and password. That's basically, it's a really simple authentication system in which you make a request and there is an extra header where your username and password are encoded with base64. It's really simple. So you can decode that, those, track the username and password, and see if there is a user uh, matching those. So now we're gonna get deep into how it works. Well, not not deep. I'm gonna I'm gonna give I'm gonna we're gonna cover a, a graph of typical request and response process to to uh, illustrate how this prospect system works. 
let's say we have the here. This is gonna be the, this is gonna be the client making a request, and this is gonna be what hap what's happening in the server. What Drupal is doing to uh, serve that request. So let's say we have a uh, a page in our site that is the latest news. This is just let's say we we have the site for Drupal Camp London, and we have this this page where we just we have a view and we are we listing news. So um, for some reason, that that list uh, that listing is is um, authenticated uh, with basic code. That's why this client is adding an extra header on this request. Basic, as I said, is is really simple. You just need to add this header with this value, basic, and this is the username, colon, password encoded. That's it. That that could be perhaps test uh, colon test being test the username and test the password. So when it hits the server, Drupal bootstraps starts going through its, uh, each of its phases, and there is one, one of the phases which is um, the authentication manager. The authentication manager receives the request, and it loads all the available authentication providers to authenticate this request. In this case, this, uh, this, request, uh, this uh, path can be authenticated through Basico or Cookie. It will look at these this authentication providers calling the apply method, and the apply method is it's a very simple way to identify if this particular authentication provider uh, can uh, process this, re this request. Basic calls apply, for example, will check that, that there is this header, and cookie will check that there is a cookie present. That's it. It will just return true or false. It's a quick way to see which one has to process the request. So when we start looping, we find that, that there is a header, so this one returns true. We get a happy dog. And we hand this to the um, authenticate method. This is the actual method that is going to see if it, can, if it can match a user out of these credentials. So it will call the authenticate method, and this method should return either a, a populated user, a user object, or no. So in this case, yes, we got another dog because we found the user, and we hand this to the access controllers. Access controllers are like when you do uh, node access in Drupal 7, these this sort of functions that um, they return just true or false, like this guy can do this thing or not, that's it. If this, this sort of stuff is, uh, is extracted from the route, depending on which, which uh, type of route you have. You, you, may, you may use an entity access controller, or a many access controller, views has its own controllers, anyway, all of them are, all of them inherit from, I, I guess that there was an interface that is called just access controller interface, that's it. And, and they all return true or false, that's it. Um, finally, yeah, because we found a user and that user can read that at least, we get, we get another uh, uh, positive response and we hand this to the controller that is gonna, that is gonna build this list. So we're gonna build the response and then finally we get 200 uh, code and the list of our news. That's, that's the main, that, that's how the authentication system works within Drupal Bootstrap. Any, any doubts so far? Any questions? Yeah. One more question. Um, so, can it handle multiple at the same time? So you'd have both the basic and cookie enabled, and if one failed, it would fall to the next one. Yeah. They are. There is a. You can when you define one, there is a priority, kind of a weight, and I'm gonna speak, talk this in a, in the next slide. But I know I'll, I'll take the chance to say it now. Cookie has zero, which is which means it's gonna be the last one in process the request. That's because it's the default one, and basic code has a hundred. So the, in this case. This list is sorted by, by priority, and the first one that returns uh, true, it will be the one uh, who is going to process the request. So in this case, it's cookie. But if it fails, then yeah, it will go to, uh, sorry, if uh, basic auth fails, it will go to cookie authentication. Cool. Yeah? So for strong authentication, could I require more than one? Yeah. Right. Yeah, for example, you can say basic auth or, or OAuth. Right, but so can I say that you must have both? You must have both a cookie and, I don't know, send your fingerprint. I don't think you can at the moment. Okay. Country? You? <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. Please go. So, out of this system, this would be the bouncer. That's the authentication system. And this would be, uh, well, in this case, we didn't get kicked out. We, we got into the, into the venue. Uh, that would be the authorization system. So, I'm going to show a little bit of code. This is how. Uh, this is a simplified version of basic auth authentication, and here can, we can find both methods, the applies and the authenticate method. 
Um, as we can see here, apply simply checks for username and password and checks that there are actually values here to, to work with, and it will return a tr a true or false, depending on that. As for the authenticate, here we are actually loading a user, and if we find it, we return it. If not, we return no, and depending on, on this on the scenario, this will, uh, uh, this will end in a, with a 403, a 404, or it will go to the next authentication provider. <coughs> Obviously, uh, as, as uh, uh, mostly everything in, in Drupal 8 uh, for, for services, we need to define a service. Um, anyone here who doesn't know or haven't seen uh, this stuff about dependency injection and services here, please raise your hand so we, I can dive more or less into it. Okay, so let's say that, and, and, and every time I try to explain this, I'm not gonna explain dependency injection because that, gonna, that would be a totally different talk, but let's say that services are classes that are just instantiated once, for example, we just need to um, authenticate the request once, and, and the dependency injection container takes care of uh, instantiating these services. So for this case, it will take care of um, creating a, a, a basic auth authentication provider object. It will take, it will, uh, uh, through the service, it also knows where this is located within our module, and um, it will take care also to, get, to provide it with all the dependencies it needs. In this case, it needs the config factory. As for the last bit, the tags, they are a way of classify or, and give some extra metadata for our authentication provider. In this case, we are tagging this as, a, as an authentication provider, and, and I'll, in the next slide I'll show how it is used by the authentication manager to say, hey, I want to load all the authentication providers available so I can authenticate this request. And this is the priority bit that I mentioned before. So um, basic health has 100 and cookie has zero, OAuth, which is in country, has, I think I have, it has 200, something like that, because you want that to go before this, I think, I, I would say this can be altered, I haven't tried to, to dive into how would it be done. And this is how the authentication manager loads each of these services. Um, there is, during compilation pass, this is what happens, for example, when you clear cache in Drupal 8, well, you, need, you don't clear cache in Drupal 8, you do cache rebuild, um, so one of the passes is uh, when, when Drupal starts loading all the authentication providers available. So it will, it will look here through all the services and it, and it will check if this service, the, the YAML file we just showed before, has the authentication tag, it will add it to the system. And it, will, it will also take into account the priority. Oh, well, this you, I just blame this too. <laughs> um, so let's... Let's, get, let's give some examples, some practical examples of how can we put this into practice. The first one would be, um, let's say we have, a, we have an existing, an existing path that we want to authenticate. In Drupal 7, uh, you would do hook menu alter and change the access callback, so you can handle it yourself. You can do this in, in Drupal 8. Uh, I have created a little module here to, to illustrate the, this. Let's say that um, we are very very happy with our support uh, in, in our company, and we are gonna add authentication to the contact form, so we can get many more contact requests. So let's dive into how it works. Um, we need to, again, define a class and a service. At this time, we're gonna plug in to the, to the event listener, we're gonna subscribe to one of the events, uh, an event is like a hook in Drupal 7, and the, the route class, has a set of events. One of the events it has is on outer routes. So that gives us a chance to hook in and outer routes. Um, by extending this class, we get a lot already done. If you, if anyone is curious and you look at this class, it uh, registers to which event uh, you're actually uh, subscribing to. In this case, it's on outer routes. But anyway, you just need to implement this module. This, uh, let's say it's a, it's a helper class, this one. Um, so in this case, this is gonna is gonna be called for every. M the provider would be the module name, and the collection would be the set of routes. Um, in Drupal 7, uh, hook menu hook menu items that are implemented, and what we want to do is, if the provider the module is contact, then I know this is the ID of the route on contact dot routing.yaml. I will uh, load the routes, and then I can say set my authentication. Oh, I'm also saying that I want an authenticated user. I don't want an anonymous user. So that's why I set these two values. 
and then I add again, I overwrite the existing route. That, that should be apart from, again, defining the service. In this case, we just need to say that this is gonna, is gonna be linked to the event subscriber, and the event subscriber, will, what, what we'll do is, is it will inform of the different events that are happening throughout the Drupal bootstrap, and, and the parent class, I forgot, uh, can you go back, what was the parent class name? Um, route subscriber base is the one that defines, hey, I want to kick in when, we, when the event on route alters, uh, um, we, when we get to that event. So when we open contact, we get this fancy form asking us for, for username and password. So if you know it, you can send a support request. If you don't, not that. Now, let's say we're defining a custom route, and we want, it was, you told me it's root, right? Um, in England, I would say root. OK, but sorry. <laughs> Correct me if I'm wrong. <laughs> We'd say root. In English, yeah. yeah. Um, in English, yeah. Okay. I get, I get mixed up <laughs> US English and in UK English. So in this case, um, we can just define it. This this would be uh, the routing YAML file for a particular module. I took this from, this is an example from core, but this would be, for example, your custom module. Uh, this is how you define, define a, a, a route in, in Drupal 8. So here, this would be the path. Um, this is where we would say this uh, this path should be authenticated with basical. And we are, we are also saying here that we want uh, an authenticated user. Uh, so we could also say we want this set of permissions. We could say we want this set of roles. There are a lot of options that you can set here on requirements. So you can so it can fit whatever your, your needs are. And uh, yeah, that's it. And for a REST resource, um, for just in case if anyone doesn't know about, about REST, uh, Drupal 8 incorporates a REST module which lets you create APIs very easily. So you can expose your data like notes and comments and even some configuration information in, and you can expose that um, through uh, using, for example, JSON format or XML format. You can plug in more formats. And this example would be a, a resource and, and in this resource definition, we are saying that we are going to expose nodes. Uh, we are going to support <coughs> these formats. And these are the authentication uh, systems that we want to use. So this means that if we open whatever is here, is it our domain, slash entity, slash node, slash one, it will return. Uh, and obviously, if we add the, the respective um, headers, either OAuth headers or basic OAuth headers, um, we'll get in whatever format we ask for, uh, a JSON version of the node, or a HAL JSON version of the node, or an XML version of the node. Um, if anyone is interested in REST, I, I really like this, I wouldn't say it's an initiative, but there's a bunch of people who are, that we are working on this, and this documentation is in Drupal.org and it's really nice. And also there is some, there's a country module that is called REST UI, so you can just click on on the, or through, the, through the admin interface, let's say, in, it's like services module, I would say, like the UI that you have to create your own API. REST UI is a simplified version of that. And while I was building these uh, this, this slides, I thought, how about a view? Well, you can, we could do the, the um, alter strategy to authenticate a view, but um, I doubt there is a way when you are configuring your view to say, hey, and I want this view to be authenticated through Cloud and um, basic out. So this slide is blank. I have no idea. Yeah, I, I doubt views has this. Um, I didn't have time to dive into this while I was preparing these slides. But uh, surely I'll, I'll find some time because I find it inter interesting. If anybody is interested in authentication stuff in Drupal, just let me know because I would be happy to like, give you some pointers. Uh, well, this was because I don't know about <laughs> this stuff. And about stuff that we are currently doing, I mean, I think people who are helping on this are Clossy and Linker, which are most, uh, the, the ones that are pushing for the REST module. Uh, there are a bunch of, of us more. Uh, but anyway, for example, we have a current issue open for basic out that um, it doesn't have plot support. Or plot, the plot uh, module It's the one that, for example, in a Drupal site, when you uh, give, like, I think it's five times your authentication credentials wrong, it will block you for an hour. Well, 
um, basically doesn't have that, so we could be attacked, you know, by a script that is trying passwords and passwords and passwords and passwords, and Drupal would just say no, 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 and obviously, you know, we could uh, we could get hacked. So that's that. The, the issue is solved. The tests are not that okay, so that's why it's still open. Did you raise your hand? Okay. <laughs> Look, then, um, whenever we, you have a REST resource uh, that has authentication, there are some scenarios where there are c circular references. Uh, this is, coming back to the, to the services thing, um, a service can have dependencies, like what, what it needs when it's instantiated, and if this service needs this service, and needs this service, and needs this service, it can end up in a loop. And that's very fun because it's not it's not easy at all to debug it, and that's that's happening in some scenarios. And uh, there is also some people who say, hey, this shouldn't be in core. We should move it to country. I don't have enough insight of, of core to make that decision, so I'm just following it. Um, in country, we have OAuth already. Uh, OAuth, as far as I know, it doesn't exist yet. And there are many other authentication systems like. I don't know, I was looking on, on uh, this, this morning on, on Wikipedia, there is Digest, Digest Authentication, there is IBS Authentication, whatever your authentication system is, it, it is, depending on your business rules, you can implement it here, you just need to implement this to this class and subscribe to Authentication Manager, and, and you should be sorted. That's it. I think I was very sure, was I? Yeah. So, any questions? Um, I, I have the, the following scenario in mind. So, you have a mobile app that has to connect with the RESTful service on, on Drupal, presumably Drupal mm -hmm. 8. So, you can use, as you said, a basic auth and you, uh, send username and password into the header to the, to the request. And, and if the user is not authenticated, you get back four or three, or you get the back uh, empty, uh, or some kind of content saying no, user is not authenticated. Or what? what you, the you get a response code. You get a four or three, I four think. Three. But I get messed up because whenever I do some testing, I, I don't know. I would say four or three, but I cannot be totally sure about that. And the problem you have to, will have to use HTTPS in order to ensure that the headers are not uh, uh, tracked or... It's optional, HTTPS. If you want to go one step further on security, you could use OAuth, where you're sending a token, and along with that token there is another token that is... Well, not a token, there's another parameter which is like an, a timeout, uh, no, sorry, a timestamp. So if, if anyone can decrypt your request and try to do the same request, it will say, hey, you know, this, this request has been made already. Mm -hmm. So that it acts as a little bit extra security. There is also OAuth 2 for that. So in your case, I would say HTTPS plus uh, OAuth would be, would be great. Okay, thank you. Uh, so I was just going to add to that, uh, in OAuth 1, it, you don't necessarily have to have HTTPS because those messages are safe. But in OAuth 2, you're, everything's basically transmitted in plain. So uh, there you would... You can't deploy OAuth 2 without HTTPS. Hmm. That would be asking to. You are into OAuth 2, are you? Yeah. I'm looking for for your authentication provider then. All right. <laughs> <laughs> any more questions? Oh. Is there any movement on SAML or Shibboleth? Oh, what? SAML or Shibboleth? Is anybody? Oh, I read about those. No, as far as I, th I know, nothing. As far as I know, there's just OAuth 1 that I, I did it, just to, to try how it works. and. I haven't heard of any more authentication providers at the moment being implemented. Oh, we're looking at having an external user store um, and Drupal um, using a single sign-on service with that. Um, one of the challenges there is that the usernames and passwords actually exist in an external system, and so we create a temporary user in Drupal mm -hmm. and they log in. Would you see these Drupal apics being part of that solution, or is that not a system? So creating temporary users. Would you need a temporary user for that? Because you could say... If you were author authorizing against a external service, I'm sorry, authenticating against an external service, you haven't got the users in Drupal initially until they're needed. Like I don't know, while it rings to my, rings a bell, I mean, to my head, you know, you want to you want to offer a third party service to authenticate users that are in a different si site, that's, that's, that's what I'll... But well, Facebook login's a good example. Yeah. Would that make use of these um, services? Um, so you imagine there's no you such option because as far as I know, Facebook uses OAuth 2. Mm -hmm. So we would need to implement an, an OAuth 2. 
<laughs> authentication <laughs> provider. <laughs> that would be your best fit. Okay. okay, so at that point you would need to create a temporary user in Drupal to respect that hmm. account that you've found. I don't think Facebook. so because when you are authenticating the request, you you could call internally to the to the external service and say is that does is this request exist because that's happening in server to server. So you could say, uh, do, does this user really exist, yes or no, and then yeah, return and it. Then, then if you create content, that user creates content uh, in, oh, in that case, side? Yes, in that so case, definitely, yeah. You would need so to mirror user that way, yeah. And is that part of this system you just showed us? No, I would say that's different. Okay. This just takes care of what's the request, uh, is there a user available, and that's it. You can you can define how you authenticate that user. So as I said, you could act, act uh, to act an external service or check your, your users. I don't know, I would have to get deeper into the problem to, to give you a proper solution, but I think it's feasible, yeah. Thank you. Any more questions? Thank you very much.